the ureter. Now the ureter is a long tube which connects the kidney to the bladder. And why is the ureter important? Because you can get blocks in the ureter, they can get strictures in the ureter, more commonly you can get stones. Now if you have a kidney stone, sometimes thereby the kidney itself can get damaged, particularly in people with diabetes. So those who have diabetes should not take kidney stone very lightly. The next big organ that you have, which is like a balloon, is the bladder. Now this is where the urine is stored, inside the bladder. Diabetes can affect the bladder in many ways. You must scan your bladder. Now we do a simple ultrasound, where you keep a probe on the abdomen. And in that ultrasound, we call it as a KUB. What is KUB? Kidney, ureter, and bladder. So you can see the kidney size. In diabetes, the kidney size is not affected even if you have kidney failure. There is one more organ in males and that is called as prostate. And I want to talk about this prostate because this prostate gland with age in men after 50 years, or sometimes even after 45, 50, sometimes after 60 years, it will start enlarging. It is related to your hormones as your male hormones go down. Hello everyone, I am Dr. V. Mohan. Welcome back to my channel where we have been producing very many videos related to diabetes and I hope you have been following and enjoying my videos. In one of my videos, I talked about the connection between diabetes and the kidney. And this was in response to many of you who wanted information about how diabetes affects the kidney and how one can prevent it. But there are some of you who said, apart from the kidney, there are other organs related to the kidney and the urinary tract, which can also get affected due to diabetes. So in this video, I'm not going to talk about the kidney as such, but I'm going to talk about the other parts of the excretory system, which can get affected due to diabetes. Let's talk about the ureter. Now the ureter is a long tube which connects the kidney to the bladder. And why is the ureter important? Because you can get blocks in the ureter, they can get strictures in the ureter, more commonly you can get stones. Now if you have a kidney stone, sometimes if you drink a lot of water, that stone can get washed off. Especially if it's a small stone, it can come out in your urine itself. But if the stone is big, and it gets lodged and gets stuck to the ureter, the urine flow can get affected, number one. Number two, there can be back flow into the kidney and thereby the kidney itself can get damaged, particularly in people with diabetes. So those who have diabetes should not take kidney stone very lightly. Please consult your doctor and ask whether the stone can be left alone or it has to be broken. We have many methods of breaking these stones now, either through a small procedure, you can pull out the stone or through lithotripsy, you can powder the stone and then it will come out in the urine. Because if you don't do that, there is a chance that the kidney, due to the back flow, the kidney can get damaged. Now, if you come down further, the next big organ that you have, which is like a balloon, is the bladder. Now, this is where the urine is stored inside the bladder. Diabetes can affect the bladder in many ways. First of all, if you have 
a little residual urine, which means the urine is not completely emptied. It can be a seat for infection. So you can get a bladder infection, you can get a urinary infection. In people with diabetes, it is more common because the glucose which is there in the urine attracts bacteria. And therefore, you can develop a urinary infection. That urinary infection in a normal person, you just give an antibiotic four or five days and the urinary infection clears away. But in people with diabetes, that urinary infection can turn serious. You can develop sepsis, especially in an older person. And they might need hospitalization. So don't take urinary infection lightly and you must scan your bladder. Now we do a simple ultrasound where you keep a probe on the abdomen and in that ultrasound we call it as a KUB. What is KUB? Kidney, ureter and bladder. So you can see the kidney size. In diabetes the kidney size is not affected even if you have kidney failure. It will still remain normal. Whereas if it is due to something else, chronic pyelonephritis or some infections, glomerulonephritis, the kidney can get shrunk. So by looking at the size of the kidney, you can say if there is any kidney change, whether it's due to diabetes or due to something else. Now you come down, the ultrasonologist will then go down, the ureter he'll see whether any obstruction is there, any backflow is there. Then he'll come to the bladder. In the bladder, he'll be able to see whether the bladder structure is normal, size is normal, whether it's become a big bladder. Now, if you have neuropathy, about which I've spoken in another video, what will happen is the bladder becomes very loose. It's not able to contract properly. It's not able to push out the urine. So we call this as the atonic bladder. It loses its sensitivity. So the bladder becomes big like that. Lot of urine accumulates. And sometimes the urine will come out even without your knowledge. If you cough, there may be urine coming out. We call it as incontinence of the bladder. Very embarrassing. Suddenly or somewhere you cough and then urine comes out. Both in men and in women it can happen. Okay. And therefore the bladder is a very important organ for you to look after when you are having your checkup for diabetes. Now just behind the bladder there is one more organ in males and that is called as prostate. And I want to talk about this prostate because this prostate gland with age in men after 50 years or sometimes even after 45, 50, sometimes after 60 years, it will start enlarging. It is related to your hormones. As your male hormones go down, your testosterone levels start going down, your prostate will start enlarging. What's the problem with that? Now remember the bladder is in front like that and the prostate is like that behind. So this prostate starts pressing on the bladder. Now, when it presses on the bladder, the bladder cannot empty fully because this prostate is producing an indent on the bladder. So it doesn't, the urine doesn't come out fully. So after you have passed the urine, you will go back to the ultrasonologist who will now put the probe again on your bladder and he will say, sir, you still got 100 ml of urine left. That means you've got residual urine. If you have residual urine in the bladder, that is how the infection sets in. Because it's not emptying, it's staying in the bladder. So those who have residual urine have to make attempts to pass urine more frequently or take some medicines by which that residual urine can come out. Now talking about the prostate again, we are not worried about the normal enlargement of the prostate. That we call as BPH, benign prostatic hypertrophy. BPH. That is common. All men will have it after a certain age. What are we worried about is that number one, the prostate can get infected. That's called prostatitis, which is that also leads to urinary infection and so on. More importantly, in a few people, that prostate can turn malignant. So now we have got cancer of the prostate. And one of the tests which we regularly do at our center is a simple blood test called as prostate specific antigen or PSA. In fact, for all men above a certain age, when you come to us, we'll be measuring your PSA. And I have seen many, many patients whose PSA was normal. The normal PSA is say one or two, that is normal. If it's above four or five, it could be abnormal. And if it goes very high, 10, 20, 30, 40, 
then you must beware you may be having prostate cancer. In the last two or three years, I've had at least five or six patients whose PSA I've been following serially and I found it slightly increasing and then suddenly it jumped up. From 10, it went to 40, 50, 60. And so I sent them off to a urologist who did a biopsy, turned out to be malignancy and they were completely cured because in the early stages we were able to pick up. So you now know why when you come to a diabetic center, sometimes patients tell me, we have come to you, just check our sugar and send us, no? We have come only for that. You want me to miss a prostate cancer for you? That you came, I got an opportunity to see, but because you did not want it, I didn't do it, and then I missed it, and then later on it turned out to be prostate cancer. Like this, many other malignancies also can be picked up by routine screening. In fact, I have written articles in international journals where I've said that a diabetes center and a diabetologist is in a unique position to pick up early cancer. Why? Because most patients with type 2 diabetes are above 40, 50, 60. That is also the age when cancer comes. So it is an opportunistic screening. Just today, I was reading in the paper that the government is now starting bi-directional screening. So what does that mean? If you go for diabetes to a government clinic, they are going to screen for TB. If you go for TB to a TB center, they are going to screen for diabetes. If you go to a HIV center, they are going to screen for TB. So you should not miss the opportunity of screening for another disease which is related if there is an overlap between the two. So when you come to a diabetic center, when we routinely screen you, of course we'll check for your sugar, we'll check for your blood pressure, cholesterol, we call it as a A, B, C. HbA1c is A, blood pressure is B, C is cholesterol. D of course is discipline which is in your hands. But apart from that, we also look for the complications of diabetes, whether eye, kidney, heart, feet, nerves, all these are affected, that will become part of the annual screening. Apart from that, while we are doing the blood test, we will add one or two like this, like the PSA test or other tests to pick up pancreatic cancer or prostate cancer or liver cancer. If we suspect when we do the ultrasound or do something, we do the echo test and we find there's something uh, slightly abnormal, there is a test called as ProBNP. If you do that, it will tell you whether you have heart failure or not by doing a blood test. All these tests have now come and that is the reason why when you come to a high-end center, we do all this because we believe in holistic treatment. It is not that if you have diabetes, you will not get any other disease. I wish it was so. A diabetic will never get a heart attack. Diabetes will never, a diabetic patient will never get uh, uh, you know, cancer. It's only a disorder. It's not a disease. Well, you can make it a disorder, as I've said in an earlier video, if you want, by keeping everything under control. But if you don't control it, this disorder can turn into a deadly disease as well. So it's all in your hands. Look after diabetes well. Take it seriously, but you don't have to be worried about it. And it is possible to have a long and healthy life despite diabetes, even if you have other conditions like early cancer, which is picked up and so on. They are all completely curable today. You've got treatments which can completely cure you. So you simply don't have to worry. And if you have any further doubts about this, please don't hesitate to get in touch with me. You can write to me to this email ID and I will be happy to respond to you. Or please leave your comments and suggestions and your questions in the comments section after this video and I'll try to get back to you. In fact, I take your questions very seriously and it's based on your questions that I make some of these videos. So thank you very much for watching and hope to see you in my next video. Stay safe. Thank you.